Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the spot removal tool in Lightroom. Lightroom spot removal tool is a lot more powerful than most people think, but you have to learn to take control of it, and then it takes practice. I find that the more I challenge it to do, the more I discover that it can do. It still has its limitations, of course. For really sophisticated retouching, I would still go to Photoshop. We're going to fix some of the spots on the snowman's face. The first question is, how far to zoom in to see the detail in the photo? Let me go ahead and collapse this panel for a second. If you're just going to email this photo to somebody at this size, then they're never going to see more detail than you see at this size. So there'd be no need to zoom in. But if you're going to share it larger, or you're actually going to print the photo, then you are going to want to zoom in to see more detail. The furthest I would zoom in would be one-to-one. One-to-one -one. One -one will show you the full pixel detail in the photo. Beyond one-to-one, -one, you're going to be seeing detail that you would never see in a final print. Now during one project, I fixed a lot of dandruff on people's shoulders at one-to-one. -one. And when I went to do a print test to see if you could even see that dandruff in the photos before I fixed it, sure enough, you couldn't even see the dandruff unless you got two inches away from the print. So I wasted a lot of time zoomed into one-to-one. -one. I would encourage you definitely to do your own tests on that, but I found that for an eight by 10 print, I was just fine zooming in halfway or one to two. For a really large print, I would definitely zoom into one-to-one. -one. So let's go ahead and go with one to two on this. And let's find some dirt on here. If we worked on it enough, this could be the cleanest snowman ever. When I click on the Spot Removal Tool, which is the second tool, I get a panel of options here. I'm going to talk about Clone versus Heal later, but 95% of the time I'm using Heal. I'll always start in Heal and then switch to Clone if I have problems. The size slider will control the size of this tool. I prefer to use the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can also use the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. Opacity I'll get to later, but to fix things, you're going to set it at 100. So I want to fix this area right here. So with the scroll wheel, I'm making my brush smaller. I want it to be a little bit bigger than the problem, not so big that it overlaps into something I'm not trying to fix. And then I'm going to click, and I'm going to let go. So Lightroom now gave me a second circle. This one is what I fixed. This is where Lightroom decided to take clean pixels from to cover up the problem. So this is the source circle, this is the fixed circle. Now as I move my mouse out of the photo, the circles disappear. Now the reason they disappear is that down here in the tool overlay, I have it set to auto hide. If I click on the drop down and, and I choose always, they'll always be there. But that just gets in the way of, of me evaluating the fix. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to Auto. Now in this case, Lightroom did a fine job of deciding where to take clean pixels from. Let's go ahead and fix these two pieces right here. Now I'm going to try to get away with just one circle. Notice how I'm overlapping with the first one. If I get too close, it gives me the hand tool to move the fix on the first one. I don't want to get that close, but I'll go ahead and put it right here. And it took it from a dirty spot. That's not good. It repeated a pattern there and made it obvious. So I'm going to take the source and I'm going to drag it somewhere clean. Now when I let go, Lightroom is going to darken this to blend in. So it blends in nicely now. That's because I'm in heal mode. If I take from a brighter area and put it in a darker area, it will darken the fix to blend in. And I'll talk about that more in, in a little bit. So now I have two fixes. I have this one that I can see the two circles and the arrow on. This is the active fix. As long as it's active, I can continue to adjust it. I can move the source. I can move the fix a little bit if it was getting too close to something else. I could change the size on the fix. Maybe I want the fix to be smaller. I don't want to fix all of that. Or I want it to be a little bit bigger because I didn't completely cover up the problem. So I can adjust the fix circle I can move the source circle. So this is the active bot. I can also delete it because it's active. I see both circles. I can also delete it. So if I hit the delete key on my keyboard, it's gone. Now I'm going to do Control or Command Z to get it back. If I want this circle to be active, because I want to adjust it or I want to delete it, 
I need to click on it to make it active. Once it's active, I can see both of the circles, the fix and the source. That's how I know it's active. Then I can delete it, I can move the source, etc. Now when I'm done, I'm just going to close the tool. You can click back on the tool or you can hit the close button. Once it's closed, you won't see those circles anymore. Those circles are being hidden from you and you're just seeing the final result. As always, Lightroom is working non-destructively. I can always go back and adjust those fixes or remove them. So tomorrow I can come back into the spot removal tool and decide that I really prefer a dirty snowman. I could click on each one of these circles and simply delete the fix. I can also, if I want to get rid of all of the circles, I can hit reset and it will undo all of my spot removal work. Now notice over here in history that every time I've done something with the spot removal tool, it's added a step in history. So clicking back is also a way to back up in time either to before you did any spot removal work or to some point in the middle. I'll go ahead and click on the top again to make sure I've really gotten rid of all of the spots. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And then I'm going to put the spot removal tool away by clicking back on it. Let's go on to another photo here just to show you that it's not just little spots that Lightroom can fix. In this photo, I want to get rid of this track right here. I'm going to go ahead, zoom in a little bit, click and drag, grab the spot removal tool. I always try to get away with one large circle. If that doesn't work, I'll go with overlapping smaller circles and I'll show that to you in a minute. But I prefer just to do one click and maybe a little dragging and be done with it rather than doing a bunch of little circles. It looks perfect to me. If I felt that it was a little too obvious, I can click and drag to adjust where the source is coming from. Maybe I can take this a little bit lower so there's no line there. And I've got a great result. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out on this. Again, nobody would know that that track was ever, ever there. Now let's go ahead and go to another photo. I'll go to this one. And let's first zoom in a little bit and remove this trash can. So click on the spot removal tool. The circle's a little bit bigger than the problem. And then it grabbed a bush from over, over here on the right hand side. That's not good. So I'm going to click and drag the source circle to somewhere else to get a better result. Now let's say for the sake of example that I wanted to remove this path. Of course the path is what makes the photo, but we'll change the, we'll change the whole mood of the photo here. Now I can't use, if I zoom out, there's no way I can use one large circle to remove this path because I have to have a source that's as big as the circle I use for the fix. So what I'm going to do is use overlapping circles. I'm going to just go ahead and click here and move my mouse out. That looks great. It, notice it continued that line in the snow. And then I'm going to put the next circle next to it. I want to make sure that I get all of the path, so I'm going to overlap with the previous circle. But I'm not going to get so close that I get that double arrow to adjust this circle. So I'll simply put another one here. Well, that actually grabbed a, a rock from somewhere else. And then I'll just continue along here with overlapping circles. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that it's not having that bleeding problem. There we go. So if I can get away with something big, I will. Like I can take all four of these rocks out at once here. So overlapping circles are great for fixing scratches on people's faces, for taking out phone poles and wires, etc. Now I'm going to move on to using overlapping circles, not to remove something, but to reduce the appearance of something. So this is a very small crop of a photo of me shot by John Cornicello here in Seattle. And I want to reduce the appearance of the circles underneath my eyes and maybe some of these lines as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the spot removal tool. And I'm going to go with a circle of about this size so I can get the full shadow underneath my eyes. And I'm not going to work at 100% opacity. I don't want to remove the shadows under my eyes. They wouldn't look three-dimensional if I did that. So what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity of the fix to just partially cover up the circles. So I'm going to try 30%. I'm going to click and it's trying to continue a line. So in this situation, it's always going to decide wrong. I'm going to take it down to some clean skin and then I'll let go. And then I'll click an overlapping circle next to it, drag down to the same clean skin. And I'll just continue along here. I'll do one more. I won't make you watch too many. 
So I've got four fixes there. Now at the bottom of the spot removal tool is a little switch that allows you to turn off your spot removal work. So you can see that I have reduced the appearance of shadows underneath my eyes. So that's before and that's after. It's subtle, but sometimes it's enough. Now I use 30% opacity. Let's see if I can get away with more. What I need to do is click on each of these circles to make it active and then adjust it. So let's try 40. Let me just show you that if you go up too far, the circle is going to be very obvious. So let me go ahead and just come down to maybe 40. 40 seems to work OK. And then I'll go ahead and take this one up to 40. So unfortunately, I have to adjust each one separately. Take that up to 40. Lightroom is bogging down as it does this work. I can imagine the math behind something like this. So now I'm going to turn the switch on and off before, after. So that's what reducing the opacity is for, partially covering something up, but not completely. Let's talk about the difference between clone and heal. I'm going to go back to my snow image here. I'm going to go ahead and collapse the film strip. Now what we're going to do is fix this object here. So I'm going to zoom in a bit more, use the space bar to pan down. And I'm going to click here, and we're going to start in clone mode. Then I'll move to heal mode, and you'll see the difference. So I'm going to start by clicking on the object that I want to remove. First of all, notice how the object didn't completely disappear. It certainly became faded out, but it didn't disappear. So my first thought is, well, is it because of where I'm taking the source from? So I'll take the source from down here. But the object is still there. So at this point, I conclude that the spot removal tool is broken, and I quit for the day. But when I come back the next day, I discover that, as usual, because I was working on another photo with the spot removal tool at low opacity, I'm still working at low opacity here. I'll simply increase the opacity to 100, and I'm good to go. So just a tip for you. Don't forget to reset that to 100. I fixed this area here, and I took the source from over here. Now it's obviously very bright. I'm in clone mode. What clone does is a straight pixel copy from the source area to the fix area. So it's much brighter down here, and it's not as bluish red down here as it is up here. Because I'm in clone mode, there's no blending going on at all. If I switch over to heal mode, you'll see that all of a sudden, the fix blends into the area where it's being placed. Lightroom looked at the source and looked at the fix area and said, the source has got to get darker and it's got to get more bluish red to blend into this area here. And that's in fact what it has done. So that's heal mode. I always start in heal mode and 95% of the time I stay in heal mode. I want my fix to blend into the area that it's going. But occasionally, you can have issues with it. And I'll get to that in just a second. What heal mode is actually doing is taking the texture from this area, the contrast from this area, and not the color and the tone. So as I move my mouse out of this photo, you may be able to see that the fix here is smoother than the surrounding snow. Because this area here is smoother than this surrounding snow. Now in heal mode, Lightroom is grabbing color and tone from outside the edge of the circle and blending it inwards. Occasionally that can produce bleeding on the edges of the circle. That's a hint to me that I need to consider clone mode. So I'm going to go ahead, make this fix just a little bit smaller, and I'm going to say for the sake of example, we want to fix something right up on the edge of this tree area here. Now when I let go, did you see how it pulled in that dark tone from, from the top here. It pulled it in. That's what I mean by bleeding. That's not going to work in this case. If I need to fix something up against the edge here, I need to use clone mode so that it's not blending in the tone from the surrounding area. Now, of course, that's not going to work either. It's way too bright. But that means I'm going to be much more challenged to come up with a source that's actually going to work for that area. So maybe right next to it. So again, I'll always start in heal mode. If I see that bleeding, I'll consider clone mode. Now for those of you looking for power tips, 
I want to show you one more cool thing I discovered about the spot removal tool. It took me two or three years of using the tool before it even occurred to me to try this. This is going to be an artificial example, but let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Now let's say that I want to remove this path up here, and for some reason I want to do it with one big circle, and I'll switch it to heal mode, and I don't want the source to be the trees. I'll take it from down here. And let's say that in general that worked really well, but inside of here there was a little pattern that was copied from here, so it was obvious to people that it was, it was fixed because I duplicated the pattern. I did a tiny, tiny bit, you probably can't even see it, but let's just pretend that it was significant. Like there was a rock right here, and I just duplicated the rock right there. Well, I could start over with smaller circles, but I can also actually put a second spot removal fix inside of the first one. Now I can't click and put it there directly. What I can do is click somewhere else. So instead of saying I'm going to fix this, I'm going to say I'm going to fix this. And we'll just take the source from over here for right now. And I'll take the fix, and I'll drag the fix in, and put it right on top of that other fix. Now I've broken apart that pretend pattern by putting one fix on top of another. Now it's a great workaround. It's not ideal. Because once you have two on top of the other, it's hard to get go back and forth between the two to edit them. Once I click on the big one to edit it, I can no longer get back to the small one. It's hidden from me. I can't adjust it. I can't delete it. The only thing I can do now is move this big one temporarily out of the way so that I can then go do whatever I need to do with a small one, like delete it. So you have to be able to get to that underlying area. So little power tip for you, if that was more than you wanted, come back to this video once you get more experience with this spot removal tool. But I think the more you work with it, if you take control of it, and you practice with it, and you challenge it, you'll find that it can do a lot more than you would have thought before you started. So this concludes the video on the spot removal tool.